Welcome to Second Listen Saturday on the Parenting Roundabout Podcast, where we share some fun moments from a past episode for your weekend listening pleasure. Look for new episodes every Monday through Friday. There was this article on BuzzFeed that is a prime opportunity for a rant. And, you know, we like those. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's all about this chart that somebody posted on Facebook that compares working moms versus stay at home moms, Ugh. um, and is, you know, extremely slanted toward stay at home moms being the only, <laughs> the only way to live. And, you know, among other things, it, it mentions that, um, Working moms are always exhausted, but stay-at-home moms rest while their child naps. Okay, first red flag. (laughs) Yes, you know, and they also are prepping from scratch meals, and Mm -hmm. they are not cleaning or shopping because only working moms do that on the weekend. What they're somehow doing all day is only reading, playing with, and disciplining their children. And I don't know when all the rest of that other stuff gets done. So it's not only delusional, but it totally sets up every parent, every mother to be doing a terrible job because just it's so unrealistic and it's all very either or, you know, it's, there's only one way to be a working mom and it's terrible. And there's only one way to be a stay at home mom. And this is the way. And you know, really, that's just not life. And uh-uh. and all three of us have lived most of our parenting careers in that gray middle of working part time or working a lot, but working from home or, you know, even Nicole, I think you had like seasonally, you know, where you were a teacher working full time during the school year, but off in the summer. So it's such a combination of things and so I thought we could rather than talk about how ridiculous this chart is because (laughs) because it's just (laughs) beyond what did you value about the different kind of mom lifestyles that you've experienced and tried out I was pretty much exhausted by all of them so (laughs) right (laughs) there's pros and cons, of course, to everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, you know, I mean, I, working from home, I certainly feel lucky that I can, you know, go and pick up a kid that needs something or, um, you know, there's what I I didn't have that certainly when I had a a very young child and I worked in a different state, (laughs) you know, like I had to, I had like an hour commute between the daycare and the office. Um, and that was hard, but I also feel like I still enjoyed my work. I still needed to work. Um, my kid was safe. My kid was learning. Um, my kid was making my kid and I were making friendships and building relationships that we still have today. So, you know, there's never like a hundred percent, this is terrible. No one should do this. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. So, I mean, Nicole, you, I think when you're a teacher and you work full time or, you know, more than that, probably during the school year, but then you are off yeah. during the summer. Is that, is it hard to switch back and forth like that? It is most definitely. And I think probably this really, I think what this does, this obviously touches a sore spot for me because I really struggled a lot with working full time because teaching isn't just a nine to to five job. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the evenings and on weekends and whatnot. Um, So I kind of feel like, yeah, life did feel like it was falling apart sometimes, (laughs) but During the summer times when I was at home, I certainly wasn't making nutritious meals from scratch and resting while my children napped. Like it was still a full on kind of a job. It wasn't, um, it wasn't all a bed of roses either. So it was a really, I, and I looked forward to going back to school. I honestly did. And, uh, cause I loved my Mm -hmm. job. But I hated dropping my kids off at 6.30 in the morning, and I hated picking them up at 6.30 at night. And, you know, there's parts of it that, yeah, were really, really dreadful. But I just, I think maybe why this really 
um, I don't know, I get really heated about this is because I was constantly battling. There was that, you know, if I was at work, I wanted to be at home. If I was at home, I wanted to be at work. It was a constant battle back right. and forth. And, and I had most of my friends were stay at home moms. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of, um, you know, I had a lot of guilt from that as well. Um, other people that I worked with did not have children cause, because I had my children mm-hmm. younger. So a lot of my, the people that I worked with hadn't had their children yet. So there was a lot. So when I was at work, there was a lot of expectation to really give 110% to my job. And some days I just couldn't, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I needed to be at home. And, and so they didn't, so, so that my people at work didn't understand me. My people at home didn't understand me. So it was a very, I really felt like I walked like mm-hmm. a tightrope in a lot of ways and in social when my kids were younger and I didn't have family around me to, I mean, my mom and dad were around, but my mom worked. So she wasn't around to, to really pick up a lot of the pieces right. um, that needed picking up. And my husband traveled a lot. So it was really very much a single parent kind of a thing. So um, yeah, this is, this really kind of resonated with me because this kind of stuff is, I felt like I lived a lot of, Oh, God, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> both sides of it. And I just didn't, what does it do? It shames. It's, it feels like it's shaming, you know, when you're trying to do your, when you're trying to do right. your best and, for, for and your situation. And the thing that I felt like, I mean, it was designed to, you know, promote staying at home and, and shame the working moms. But I feel like it shamed the stay at home moms too. That mm-hmm. was the part that, mm-hmm bugged me about it um yeah because you know no nobody's life is perfect and nobody's everyone's figuring it out every day (laughs) you know they're they're not like oh good I solved that and now life is great you know because something changes right constantly so right right and I I mean what if you are the stay-at-home mom and you're looking at this thinking wow, I should be resting on my kids nap. I should be making dinner from scratch. I should be reading to my kids all day long. I don't know. It's definitely a clickbait kind of a thing, but at the same time, there is a reality to it that I think can really, um, if you're vulnerable, it can certainly make you you know you have a reaction Mm -hmm. to it I guess is the thing right yeah I just don't really feel like I have a dog in this fight you know I I never I never was working full-time in an office when I had kids and I also didn't have babies so that was not an issue of putting a kid in, in daycare we did most I did is we had I went into an office two days a week at one point, and one day my my husband was home and my son got home from preschool because, you know, we had, they were in special ed, so they got bussed, so there was never an issue of dropping off. And the other day we had some lady from church who came to our house and was there when he got off. So it was very minor. And then the rest of the time I was working at home, and that had its own things, but, you know, they were in school usually. So I was able to you know, I never, I guess just maybe the age I was when I had my kids and the situation that I had and the fact that we didn't really have a typical situation anyway, in right. many ways. Um, you know, I just never felt like I was part of either end of that. I never felt like I was really a stay-at-home mom, but I never felt like I was really a working out-of-the-house mom either. I mean, later on when I was working they were in both in elementary school and I was working full time in an office, but it was up the street from their school. And I had an arrangement with my boss that I could go work in the school, you know, do the volunteer stuff. It was all very, um, you know, fluid. So, um, it doesn't push my buttons really. Um, I mean, I understand that it does for some people. Uh, I just, I feel like it's kind of ginned up by people who are looking for clicks, the whole war between stay at home moms and, and, Um, working moms, which is not to say that people don't have their own opinions and sometimes, you know, impress them on you at family gatherings and unpleasant, you know, get togethers, but it's just, gosh, it makes good blog fodder. (laughs) 
and you can oh and makes good right. podcast fodder <laughs> and uh here we are you know it can mm-hmm. it it riles people up and i understand that but um i don't think that i really had i had a foot in each of those i guess but our situation was always completely unique so you know and i have to be honest here and and say that when I was during this, as Catherine asked earlier, during the summertime, you know, when I was at home and, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the right hand side of that column. Yes, I was home all day long. I had my children with me. I read to them. We went to the week, the beach and the park. OK, I have to be honest and say that I also had a lot of depression around mm-hmm. that time. <laughs> like I wasn't entirely 100 percent happy doing that either. Right. You know, so it's like. It was a real struggle to to figure out what I should be and what suited me and uh, where did I feel the least guilt? You know, was I happier working full time? Nope. Was I happy being at home full time? Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> so this really pushed buttons for me because I could look at it and go, yeah. You know, like aside from the fact that, yeah, okay, it was brought to light for, you know, readership. Yes. But at the same time, it's still, there's a lot of, a lot of points in there that do resonate and are actual mm-hmm. real issues that I personally struggled with. So, but now I find that I'm in an okay situation and I'm happy with that right now. So Good. maybe I've found what I needed to, where I needed to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, and your kids grew up. What about you, Catherine? (laughs) Yeah, well, that helps, too. Yeah. Although, (laughs) in our household, that hasn't really made all that much of a difference. But, because I still have to be around to drive people places. And it's, you know, I can see that it's going to be a no particular end Mm -hmm. to that. You know, another Mm -hmm. part of it being a unique situation. But... That's okay. Yeah, I mean, I I feel lucky that I'm able to work at home and work flexibly and not all that much at the moment. Um, But then, you know, it's (laughs) scary. It's like, okay, we're depending almost entirely on someone else's job at, like, a big company that has a wave of layoffs, like, every couple months. You know, that's super scary. Right, You know, I try not to, I don't like having all our eggs in that basket, so. Yeah. And the thing I find a lot, too, when it comes to the, you know, devoting yourself 100% to parenting versus devoting devoting yourself 100% to work dichotomy is, I'm way better at the work part. (laughs) (laughs) I know exactly how to edit a manuscript and make it better, but to teach a kid Something to do home, doing homework, dealing with emotional issues, figuring out job issues. I ain't good at that. I want to hire somebody to do that who's good at it. You know, I want teachers doing that. It's like, it's, it's, it becomes very, very easy to bury yourself in work just because you can feel competent doing it. Yeah. And I've, I'm blessed that I kind of have that right around me at all times. And I can just say, I'm just going to go in my room now and do something I'm good at. (laughs) Y'all, y'all try not to fall apart too bad until I get back. Um, I can't do this anymore. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's some, I do believe there are people who are good at that and, you know, God bless them if they're able to do that full time and they're, it makes them happy. That's fine with me too. We all have different yeah. skills, but I, you know, unfortunately I had to do a lot just because of our particular situation and, you know, the whole, uh, you know, IEP meetings and all that, having to be an educational advocate, that's not, I mean, it's, I was thrown into it and I did okay with it, I think, but that also would not have been my choice. Uh-huh. <laughs> Could I go to work, please? Would that be okay? Right. Can I just <laughs> can I just go to an office somewhere and somebody else deals with this? Yeah, no so kidding. It's it is you know. I I feel so much more competent when I just close my door and work on stuff that, in the greater scheme of things, is not important except for the money, which is well, and it also kind of very has important 
a right answer and a wrong answer. Exactly. Oh, those are so nice. <laughs> Aren't they? Even I mean, even you know, grammar doesn't always. Grammar has a certain amount of. I mean, it has rules. You know, as I'm copy editing, right. there are always rules. But there's also, you know, there there not everything is cut and dried, and sometimes it gets frustrating. But it's so much more, and so much less significant in the long run. Right. <laughs> if you right. make a mistake you make with a your mistake, kids, you feel well. like that's gonna that's gonna affect your family for the rest of your lives. Yet, if you misplace a comma. Although, you know, if you want to look for people outraged about things on the internet, there is quite the firestorm over the Oxford comma. You can find people. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's true. (laughs) Yes. You know, people. So. People enjoy being outraged about. They do. Anything and everything. Things important and un. Yes. It's where we're at these days, I think. Yeah, certainly, I've certainly seen parenting debates on all sorts of issues that that raise that same level of um, outrage. And I maybe I mean I, I get outraged about like immediate things, like some tech person telling me that I need to open this website in Internet Explorer. <laughs> that makes the top of my head fly off. <laughs> Oh, Which man. happened to me today, listeners. Today, <laughs> In a large company said the preferred website <laughs> for our large operation is Internet Explorer. See that—that's what gets me apoplectic. This other stuff, I go, yeah, well, she's a crackpot, but you know, God bless. <laughs> if you find people who like your stuff, you know, I don't agree with you, but go in peace. Uh, but yeah, don't tell me to use Internet Explorer, or I shall. <laughs> The things that matter. That is a bridge too far. That is a bridge too far. That is the sort of thing that makes me lose it. Yeah.